This is the CBS Evening News with Walter Cronkite. Good evening. Listen to the words of South Dakota Republican Senator Larry Pressler commenting on the attention he's getting because he avoided the tentacles of an undercover FBI sting operation called ABSCAM, that's short for Arab Scam. Said Senator Pressler, I turned down an illegal contribution, whatever have we come to, if that's considered heroic. One senator and seven representatives have been Im implicated so far in that bribery scandal and ABSCAM has not yet concluded. Fred Graham has details. So far, there have been no indictments, but the story that leaked out from government sources over the weekend suggests that some bribery prosecutions could result punishable by up to 15 years in prison. Undercover FBI men operating out of swanky New York hotels and elsewhere on the East Coast engineered what amounted to a congressional sting operation that paid out a half million dollars in alleged bribes. A phony company called Abdul Enterprises in Holbrook, Long Island was the FBI's cover, and the word was spread that a wealthy Arab sheik was ready to pay cash for favorable treatment on immigration matters and business deals. At a fashionable Washington townhouse that had been rigged with hidden TV cameras and microphones, influence peddlers who had fallen for the FBI trick began to bring congressmen around to talk. There in the library and in a basement recreation room, satchels of money allegedly changed hands, sometimes up to $50,000. The owner of the townhouse happened to be a newspaper reporter, Leela Scars of the Washington Post, who was out of the city on assignment. He sheepish that he didn't get on to the story because his neighbors were suspicious. They would say, boy, you know what's going on in your house? It's strange. It's not like normal folks. It's uh, uh, a lot of businessmen come there every day carrying briefcases, wearing business suits. They come in cars with New Jersey, New York, and uh, other license plates out of the immediate area. And they seem to hold meetings, all of the meetings down in the basement. And then uh, they leave, uh, and sometimes no one spends the night there. Sometimes there's one or two cars outside. So it was clearly not your average family. The circumstances suggest that entrapment will be raised as a defense, but this is a legal excuse only if the defendant can show that he was an otherwise innocent type who was literally pressured by undercover police agents into committing a crime that he otherwise never would have done. This is a tough defense for a savvy politician to prove, and he would have to admit that he took a bribe even to claim that defense. FBI Director William Webster said the FBI guards against being guilty of entrapment. We have an awful lot of good legal advice in all our sting operations uh, to make sure that that doesn't happen. But so far, the only claims from the congressman are of innocence. I have done nothing wrong, and uh, that's as much as I think is necessary to say now. I know of no wrongdoing that I have done or the congressional office that I serve in. I didn't take any actions on behalf of anyone. I merely met with some people who uh, portrayed themselves in a, in a certain light. I have not been involved in any kind of criminal activity. The Justice Department announced an investigation of the leaks that officials say ended the operation, but sources say the FBI was about to close it down anyway. They were giving away money so fast that it was costing too much, and FBI Director Webster had decided that the congressional sting had made its point. Fred Graham, CBS News, at the Justice Department. In Washington, Senator Pressler told Robert Shackney about the circumstances of the meeting at which he inferred Abscam attempted to bribe him. Senator Pressler says he thought he was just meeting some potential campaign contributors, but that the two disguised FBI agents he thought were businessmen first had a request to make. And they said they had friends in the Arab world who, if there was a revolution, they might want to come to the United States. And did I know how they could be assured to get into the United States? And then they mentioned in there some kind of bills that senators can introduce to get people in. And indeed, there are private bills. At that point, I, I began to become suspicious, and I said, well, you know, there's a fellow was in jail for doing that and uh, I don't know what you're suggesting but so then the conversation continued and pretty soon they said well how's your campaign coming so we talked about my campaign just a little bit they said well you know a lot of money could be raised very quickly for that campaign at that point I stood up and said that uh, uh, really the, uh, I've, we may misunderstand each other the direction you're heading is, would be very illegal and I used the term illegal three times because I wanted to emphasize it to them I took them to be very naive, flaky uh, people who wanted to participate in the political process and didn't quite know how. 
Pressler said the two talked of raising between fifty and a hundred thousand dollars for him, but that they never directly offered him a bribe. As the senator put it, they just kind of created an atmosphere. Robert Shackney, CBS News, Washington.